Auzu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillah ala salatu was salam ala rasulihi wa sahbihi ajma'in rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu my name is fara and today inshallah we will study the 38th chapter of the glorious quran sura sad sura has 88 verses and it was revealed in maka in some narration sura has revealed after sura was revealed after hazrat umar radhiyallahu anhu embraced islam yet other indicate that it was revealed during the last illness of abu talib the uncle of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam the name of the sura has been taken from the first letter sad and allah alone knows the meaning of it sura begins by saying that quran is full of reminding and those who do not accept the message of quran are arrogant then it describes that allah punishes every wrong doer and the example of previous nations has been given sura mentions nine prophets uh, ibrahim ishaq yaqub ismail al-yasa zilkifl daud suleiman and ayub salamun alaihim prophet suleiman daud and ayub salamun alaihim their stories have been mentioned in detail Sura mentions the story of Adam and Iblis in the last section uh, it mentions this story to tell the disbelieving Quraysh that arrogance which prevented them from accepting the message is the same arrogance which had prevented Iblis from bound Adam soon they will come to know the truth so let's begin important points of sura saw Sura starts by saying that Quran is full of reminding but people disbelieves in it due to their pride. Arab pagans wonder that a warner has come to them among from among themselves and they say he is a sorcerer and a liar. Nauzubillah. They were surprised to have the idea of only one Allah. Their leaders said to their people that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has invented a lie. Do not believe in him and be steadfast to your gods. Allah says is the dominion of the heavens and the earth and that is between their between them is theirs they will be defeated as the people of old times were defeated then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 12 people of saleh people of nu lut musa hud and shuaib salam alaihim they also denied their messengers then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example of firaun he is called zul autad in this surah which means man of stakes because of his large army but when he and his people denied the message of allah they were destroyed completely and allah is just in accountability allah says in verse 17 o rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam be patient of what the disbelievers say and remember our slave daud alaihi salam and he was awab which means returning to allah in all matters and in repentance we will discuss him in detail in our story section then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforts rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam by mentioning suleiman alaihi salam and his unique kingdom allah says he was an excellent slave ni'm al abd but he too was tested look at the patience of ayub alaihi salam he was tested severely he lost everything during his illness but he remained steadfast indeed they were the chosen slaves then sura describes a beautiful end of the pious the doors of the eden paradise will be opened they will have uh, their everything they will recline there in the fruits will be there drinks in abundance and beside them there will be their chaste wives it will be said to them this is our provision which will never finish on the other hand those uh, who are disobedient to allah and rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam there will be an evil return for them they will be given a drink of boiling fluid and dirty wounds astaghfirullah they will enter in troops blaming each other for their misguidance and they will say oh allah whoever misled us add to him a double torment in the fire and they will dispute among themselves then from verses 69 onward allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the creation of adam allah says remember when your lord said to angels when i have created the man with clay and fashion him and breathe into him his soul then you fall down prostrate to him so the angels prostrated 
but Iblis did not. Then Allah asked Iblis that what prevented you not to bow to Adam? He said, I am better than him. You have created me from fire and you have created him from clay. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed him and told him to get out of Jannah. Iblis asked for respite till the day of repentance, sorry, the day of recompense, uh, the day of resurrection. And he was given. He said, I will surely mislead them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if that is the case, I will fill hell with you and with those who follow you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the whispers of Satan. Amen. Surah ends on saying that the Quran is only a reminder and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a warner. He is not asking for any wage, whether you follow him or not. It's your choice. Soon you will come to know about the truth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who follow the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follow the teachings of Quran. Ameen. Virtues and benefits of Surah Saad. There are 10 rewards for each letter you recite from the Holy Quran. Surah Saad is the only uh, surah that starts with the letter Saad. Quran al-Hakim is called a zikr, the reminder, three times in this surah. Ponder over verses number 1, 29 and 87 and you will see Allah says it is a book which we have sent down to you full of blessings that they may ponder over its verses and that men of understanding may remember. Verse 18 encourages us to glorify Allah at the time of Al-Ishraq. Make your habit to pray Ishraq prayer. Let's move on to our favorite section, story section, story of Prophet Daud alayhi salam. From verse 17 onward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the story of Daud alayhi salam. He's called Zil Aid, possessor of hands. He was a prophet and a great king, but he did not live on the income of his kingdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made iron soft for him and he used to make weapons and lived on its income. He was extremely thankful to Allah for all the blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with beautiful voice and when he used to recite Zabur, which was the book given to him, mountains joined him and the birds rallied around him. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar bin Aras, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, the most beloved fasting to Allah was the fasting of Da'ud alayhi salam and he used to fast alternate days. And the most beloved prayer to Allah was the prayer of Da'ud alayhi salam. He used to sleep the first half, then pray for one third and then sleep. One day he was praying in his prayer chamber. He ordered his guards not to allow anyone to interrupt. But two men entered and he became frightened because all the doors were locked. One of the men said, do not be frightened. We have a dispute and have come for your judgment. This is my brother. He has 99 sheep and I have only one. He gave it to me, but took it back. Daud al-Islam without hearing from the other party said, he did you wrong. Many partners oppress one another. Then two men vanished like a cloud and Daud al-Islam realized that they were actually two angels and they and he should not have passed a judgment without hearing from the opposing party. He fell down in prostration and turned to Allah in repentance and it is an 11th place of sajda in Holy Quran. Let's, let's move on to our next story about Suleiman al-Islam and his unique kingdom. Surah describes it in verses from 30 to 40. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed Dawud al-Islam with the righteous son, Suleiman al-Islam, and he inherited the knowledge of Dawud al-Islam. He said, O oh mankind, we have been taught the language of birds and have been bestowed all things. He had armies of jinn and men and birds. He could command the winds and understand and talk to, to birds and animals. Allah favored him with a mine of copper, which was rare metal in those days. During his lifetime, um, horses were the common mode of transportation. And one day, Suleiman al-Islam was reviewing a parade of his stable. The fitness, the beauty, and the posture of the horses fascinated him so much that he kept on stroking and admiring them. The sun was nearly setting and the time for the middle prayer was passing by. Then he realized his mistake and returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. Surah also mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him with an evil body on his throne. It is narrated that one, once he was away in an expedition and in his absence, an evil devil ruled his kingdom and started making evil decisions. Soon people realized that he is not Suleiman. Then, by Allah's grace, he returned to his throne. He made dua, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive me and bestow upon me a kingdom such as shall not belong to any other after me. And you are the bestower. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is our gift. So spend or withhold. There will not be any account on you. Subhanallah. Let's move on to our last story. Patience of Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam. Verse 41 onward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the story of Ayyub alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a long life and a plenty of servants, wealth, children, everything. He used to make those who receive his charity feel as if they are favoring him. Iblis became annoyed and he tried to distract Ayyub alayhi salam from his prayer, but he was unsuccessful. Then he, by Allah's izan, destroyed his wealth, his cattle, his family to prove Allah that now he will not worship you. Then Iblis whispered to Ayyub alayhi salam saying that you have lost everything. Surely Allah is not rewarding you for all your prayers. Ayyub alayhi salam was true to his belief and he said that Allah gives sometimes and sometimes he takes. And what Allah has taken away from me belonged to him and he prostrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iblis was extremely frustrated and he said to Allah, he is still healthy and if the good health is not there, he will surely reject you. Ayyub al Islam was tested with severe illness until he was reduced to mere skin and bone. Never a single organ was sound except his heart and tongue with both of which he glorified Allah all the time. Subhanallah. All his friends kept away from visiting him. His wife took good care of him. Iblis whispered his wife and she said to Ayyub alayhi salam, Why don't you call upon Allah to remove these sufferings? Ayyub alayhi salam said, We had a good life for 80 years and we only are suffering from last 7 years. Iblis has made you dissatisfied and if I ever regain my health, I will punish you with a hundred stroke. Ayyub alayhi salam turned to Allah and said, Satan has touched me with distress. Allah said, strike the ground with your foot. This is a spring of water to wash in and a refreshing drink. Ayyub alayhi salam obeyed and immediately his good health was restored. He was worried about his oath, you know, about beating his wife. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, take in your hand a bundle of thin grass and strike your wife once with it and do not break your oath. Allah praised him by saying, we found him patient. How excellent a slave and was ever returning to us. Subhanallah. Let's move on to action points and let's see what Surah has taught us. Number one, we must turn to the Quran al-Hakim for guidance. Number two, remember there is only one God, Allah. So ask Allah alone for everything, no matter how small or how insignificant you think something is, ask Allah alone. Number three, learn from the destruction of previous nations. Number four, be patient in the most difficult circumstances. Number five, repent and return to Allah. And remember, this life is a test. You will be tested. I will be tested. We all will be tested. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who pass their test. Ameen. Worship Allah in all circumstances and don't let worldly goods distract you. And lastly, do not be arrogant and accept the truth with humility because arrogance is a characteristic of Satan. Now we are on the last section of our study of Surah Saad, which is Du'as. There is not any direct du'a mentioned apart from Prophet Suleiman al-Islam's du'a where he said to Allah Azza wa Jal, My Lord, forgive me and grant me a kingdom such as will not belong to anyone after me. Indeed, you are the bestower. But while I was, I was studying, I found a very beautiful du'a in Jamia Tirmidhi which I thought I will share with you and it is narrated 
reported Abu Darda reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that one of the prophets Dawood alayhi salam dua was Oh Allah, I ask you for your love, the love of those who love you and deeds which will cause to me attain your love. Oh Allah, make your love dearer to me than myself, my family and the cold water. I mean, try to memorize it. If not, then at least remember the first part where it says Allahumma inni asaluka hubbaka wa hubba man yuhibbuka. I mean, with this, we conclude our study of Surah Saad. Soon we will upload the study of our next surah, Surah Az-Zumar. Till then, you take care, be happy and spread the happiness. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikri al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.